Okay, hello. Um, pause the video, have a go at the 10 questions, and in five seconds, your answers will appear. Okay, so mark them, see how you got on. Um, if you're struggling with a particular topic, uh, get onto Brainscape, do some studying. If you're struggling to understand things, then think what your questions are and get in touch with you, your teacher. So we're into unit three, we're starting unit three, and um, we're going to learn initially about the nervous system, uh, and it links in nicely with some things that we've learned uh, at National Five and some things we've learned at, in higher human as well. So just pause the video, have a look at the, the next couple of slides, and just see if you can remember these, these points from National Five and higher human. So this is from higher human. We've talked about these terms before. Can you make the link with the previous topic? What was the topic we were discussing when we were talking about the medulla, uh, the sympathetic nerve and the parasympathetic nerve and the antagonistic nature? Well, you might remember that we talked about it in terms of the heart rate and the sinoatrial node having a sympathetic and a parasympathetic nerve. And we said that the, the nature of these was antagonistic well, we're just going to learn a little bit more about about what that means so here are the key learning points uh, pause the video and have a read through them so the nervous system can be split up into into two branches uh, by means of its location where you find it in the body so you've got the central nervous system which guess what is central it's in the center of the body. You've got your brain and your spinal cord making up the central nervous system. So those are the two things that make up the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord. And then bringing information to the central nervous system and then carrying information away from the central nervous system is the peripheral nervous system. So the periphery, if you're on the periphery of something, you're on the edge. Um, so the peripheral nerves, they run from the central nervous system to the extremities of the, of the body. So you remember this from National 5, this is really the flow of information through the nervous system. And if you look at the, the blue arrow and the red arrow, they together represent the peripheral nervous system. So you can see the blue arrow bringing information to the central nervous system. The brain and the spinal cord will will deal with that information and make a decision, and then it will bring about a response. Um, and that information is, is passed from the central nervous system to the effectors uh, by means of nerves, motor, motor nerves. So in the example, if, if, you know, if I see a pie and I smell pie, mmm, pie, me want pie, me eat pie, well, in the example, the stimulus is the pie, and the receptors are my eyes and my nose. And my eyes and my nose send information to my brain in, in the central nervous system. And in my brain, when I receive that information, my brain will compare that information that I'm receiving from my, from my senses with previous information that I've got stored in there. So I've got lots of happy memories of pies and my brain makes the decision that I'm going to eat that pie. So in order to get the pie, I may need to move my muscles. I'll need to move my arms and my, my hands in order to pick up the pie and put it in my, stuff it in my face. Um, so that, that would be the, the effectors. The muscles uh, would need to receive the signals from my brain and the response is uh, me stuffing my face. So the peripheral nervous system can be, can be broken up into two uh, based on its function. So you've got the somatic nerve nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. So somatic generally is, is um, voluntary decisions that you make. Uh, whilst you're thinking about it consciously. So me deciding to take the pie, to eat the pie, is a conscious decision. I've thought about that, and I've made that decision. 
the autonomic nervous system is more automatic. It, it happens without you thinking about it consciously. Now, we've talked about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nerve. And the example we talked about previously in the course is, is heart rate and how they affect heart rate. So you, you don't need to consciously think about your heartbeat. Beat, beat, beat. You know, if you had to do that throughout your life, you'd never be able to concentrate and get anything done if you, if you had to constantly think about, you know, beat, breathe, beat, breathe. So this happens subconsciously um, without, any, without any conscious thought. So the autonomic nervous system, this one that happens without any conscious thought, is, can be split into two as well. Uh, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic uh, nerves. So the, the best way to remember it is the sympathetic system gets your body ready for action. And then your parasympathetic calms you down after, after that action. So we'll, we'll look at a few examples. So don't fall into the trap of think, thinking that the sympathetic nerve always speeds things up or always increases things. That is not true. The sympathetic nerves get, get you ready for action. So if you look at the first two, the heart and lungs, well, the sympathetic nerve will increase heart rate, will increase breathing rate, because when you're getting ready for action, well, you need more oxygen to be pumped around the body so that you can produce more energy through respiration. So the sympathetic nerve does increase heart rate and breathing rate. And we can see on the opposite side, the parasympathetic nerve has an antagonistic effect. In other words, it, it affects the same organs. It affects the heart and the lungs, but it has the opposite effect to the sympathetic nerve. So the parasympathetic nerve slows down the heart rate and the breathing rate. But just notice the examples, the green examples, the sympathetic nerve does not always increase things. So you can see here that digestion is decreased by the sympathetic nerve. So when you are in a fight or flight situation, when you are preparing for action, digesting your food is not a priority. Um, so the sympathetic nerve decreases um, digestion during these, these times. So just to sum up the, the, the structure of the nervous system, we said, didn't we, that in terms of location, it can be split into two. So you have your central nervous system in the center of the body, and that's made up of the, the brain, and the spinal cord. And then you've got your peripheral nervous system, which takes information to the central nervous system and, and carries information away from the central nervous system. The peripheral nervous system can be split into two. So somatic nervous system is when you're consciously thinking about something like pies. And the autonomic nervous system is, is, is subconscious, things that you don't need to necessarily Think about like your heart rate and your breathing rate. The autonomic nervous system, that automatic, if you like, nervous system, well, that can be split into two, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system. The sympathetic prepares you for action. The parasympathetic calms you down. They are said to be antagonistic. Antagonistic means that they affect the same part of the body but they have opposite effects. So if the sympathetic speeds something up, the parasympathetic would slow it down. If the parasympathetic speeds something up, the sympathetic would slow it down. So pause the video, have a look at the key points, check that you understand them. If you don't, just go back and have a look at the video again and uh, look at it a few times. Uh, and if there's anything you don't understand, write down your question and get in touch with your teacher. So the next section we're going to look at is neural pathways. It's just a small section. We're going to learn about three types of neural pathway and, 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 three, and, and examples, really, of these three types of pathway. So the three types are diverging, converging, and reverberating pathways. So first of all, the converging neural pathway. So to converge basically means 
uh, are coming together. So you can see here on the left that these four nerves are converging onto one neuron. Okay, and that basically what, what happens is that these impulses are a, a bit from these four neurons are added together, if you like, uh, to create a, a bigger impulse. Um, and that's called summation when that takes place. So why does that happen and wh why is that useful and where, where is this useful in the, in the body? Well, one example is, is in the eye. So at the back of the eye, there are cells uh, that detect uh, light and they use, they have these converging neural pathways and it, and it helps us to see um, in, 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 you know, relatively dim conditions. So what happens is that these, these cells here, the impulses from these cells converge and then this process of summation takes place. So summation is when lots of information, small bits of information or small impulses from these cells is added together when it converges to create this a, a bigger impulse, if you like. Now, individual cells on their own, um, the, the impulse from individual cells on their own wouldn't be big enough um, to pass on the information to the next cell. Um, but by adding the little bits of information from each cell together, it gets to the stage where the, the impulse is big enough uh, to be passed on. So that means that e even the cells that are receiving just uh, small impulses, um, by adding the, the, the small impulses together, then you can create a, a bigger impulse uh, and that information can be passed down the next neuron. So it means in dark conditions, we're, we're still able to, to see that's one example of a, a, a converging neural pathway and where it's useful. A diverging neural pathway is, is almost opposite. So you can see in the diagram that actually, rather than it coming together in converging, that actually diverging means that it's going to more locations. You can see that it's splitting up and spreading out. Um, so when you want to send an impulse to lots of different places at the same time, um, a diverging neural pathway is very useful. So examples of this include, you know, you trying to, to write something. So fine motor control. When you hold a pen and you, you control the movement of a pen, there's many muscles involved in that. Um, so many muscles need to receive signals at the same time in order to, to carry out fine motor control. So a diverging um, neural pathway would be used. Temperature control is another example. So if you get too hot, um, you, you want to tell your body, your brain wants to send a message to many sweat glands throughout the body, telling them to, to sweat uh, in order to help cool you down. So you want that information to be sent to many places at the same time. So again, a, a diverging neural pathway can be, can be really useful for that. And then finally, we've got a reverberating neural pathway. So reverberating pathways are ones that you want to repeat over and over again. You want that same signal to be sent continuously through the pathway. And you can see that what happens in the, in the pathway, that these neurons later on in the pathway, while they send signals back to the start of the pathway and they stimulate the pathway again to keep on going. So you can see there's this, this circular motion and it keeps, it keeps the pathway going again and again and again and again. And an example of that is, is breathing. So you're sending signals to your lungs to the muscles that control breathing in your in your lungs. And that pathway needs to carry on for 
the rest of your life. Um, so reverberating pathways are pathways that you want to uh, continually send um, impulses down. That might be for a lifetime, but it can be shorter than that. It, it can be for uh, minutes, it can be for hours. Um, but like we said, for in the example of uh, breathing, then it's, uh, it's a lifetime. So three types of neural pathway that you need to understand and, and know an example of. So diverging is when the, the signal, the impulse, is what you want it to go to many places at the same time. So it splits and spreads out. Converging is when you get lots of small impulses coming together and being added together um, to carry out this process called summation so that by adding the small impulses together, you get a big enough impulse to, to pass the information on. The best example of that in the body is, as we said, is in the eye and it allows you to see in quite dim conditions. And then finally, the reverberating pathway, a pathway that you want to repeat again and again and again. The signal, the impulse from uh, neurons later on in the pathway pass impulses back to the start of the pathway and it just continues this, this cycle. And the example we, we talked about for that was uh, breathing. So have a look at the, the, the key learning points. And again, anything you don't understand, go back, have a look at the, the video again, write down your questions and speak to your teacher.